what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be reading The English Roses by Madonna for y'all. I really loved reading Barbie as Rapunzel for y'all a couple months ago and I thought I would read another one of my favorite books growing up. And a bunch of people don't know that Madonna actually wrote a bunch of children's books. You famous singer Madonna. Yes, about Madonna. And this was one of my favorite books growing up. They even had like a little website like the Beanie Babies and like the Webkins and stuff. There was also the English Roses website for me that I was like obsessed with as a kid. I absolutely love this book as a kid so really look forward to reading it for y'all and hope that y'all will love it as well. So let's get into it. Oh and this says on the inside cover we have to Avery Merry Christmas 2003 love grandma thanks grandma <laughs> and again <laughs> in the section that says this book belongs to my middle name is misspelled yet again good job Avery good job the English roses by Madonna with illustrations by Jeffrey Fulmari. And this says for Lola and Rocco. Also, I love all of the illustrations in this book. They're cute, gorgeous, and adorable, and I love them so much. Anyway, we're continuing. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the English Roses? Here's what they are not. A box of chocolates, a football team, or flowers growing in the garden. What they are is this. Four little girls named Nicole, Amy, Charlotte, and Grace. Here are some things you should know about them. They go to the same school and live in the same neighborhood. They play the same games, read the same books, and like all the same toys. They have picnics in the summer and ice skating parties in the winter. They are practically glued to each other at the hip. Most of all, they love to dance. And here's just some illustrations of them dancing. <laughs> it all sounds so perfectly fun and nice, and in so many ways it was, but there was only one problem. They were all a little bit jealous of another girl in the neighborhood. Her name was Bina, and here are some things you should know about her. She was very, very beautiful. She had long silky hair and skin like milk and honey. She was an excellent student and very good at sports. She was always kind to people. She was special. But she was sad because even though she was the most beautiful girl anyone had ever seen, she was also very lonely. She had no friends and everywhere she went, she was alone. Sir, if you hear a squeaking noise, my hamster decided to wake up and run on her wheel. <laughs> By now you're probably wondering, What's the big deal? If she's so nice, why didn't the English Roses invite her over for a cup of tea? Listen, I already told you why. Because they were all a little jealous. Well, maybe more than a little. Haven't you ever been green with envy or felt like you were about to explode if you didn't get what somebody else had? If you say no, you are telling a big fat fib. And I'm gonna tell your mother. Now stop interrupting. You see, the English Roses wanted to be friendly and they knew that Bina was lonely, but they could not bring themselves to be nice to her because everywhere they went, this is what they heard. What a beauty she is. She shines like a star. That Bina is something else. When Nicole and Amy and Charlotte and Grace heard what people speak this way about Bina, they always felt like they were going to be sick. This is what they would say. How can anyone be so perfect? No one ever says that about us. It's not fair to have so much. Let's pretend we don't see her when she walks by. Let's push her in the lake. And that's what they did. No, silly, not the lake part. They're pretending not to see her part. And so time went on and the English Roses continued to have fun with each other while Bina remained alone. One night when all the girls were having a sleepover party at Nicole's house, her mother peeked her head in the corner and said, do you mind if I come in and have a little chat with all of you? Don't worry, mom. We're going to bed soon, said Nicole. Just let us finish our pillow fight. That's not why I came in here, her mother replied. I want to talk to you about Bina. She lives down the street and goes to your school. She likes to do all the things that you do and yet you never invite her over or make any effort to be friendly with her. There was a very long pause. The English roses looked around the room at one another. Amy was the first to speak. She thinks she's God's gift to creation just because she's beautiful. Yes, why should we invite her over? She gets enough attention already, Charlotte joined in. It's not that we don't like her, said Nicole. It's just that she's probably stuck up. Pretty girls usually are. Nicole's mother thought about this for a moment, and then she said, I think you girls are being unfair. She looks like she could really use a friend and you haven't even had a conversation with her. How do you know what kind of person she is? How would you like it if people decided whether they were going to be nice to you based on how you look? The girls knew she had a point, but they didn't want to say it. Suddenly, they didn't feel like having a pillow fight. Please think about what I've said, said Nicole's mother, and she stood up and kissed them all goodnight. When her mother was gone, Nicole turned out the light and all the girls lay awake in the dark for quite a while thinking about what Nicole's mother had said. No one said a word and eventually they all fell asleep. And while they were sleeping, they each had the same dream. Here's what they dreamed. All four of them were having a picnic in the park. 
complaining, as usual, about how beautiful Bina was and how she got too much attention and how unfair it was for all of them. When suddenly a fairy godmother appeared, she was short and plump and very jolly looking. Listen, why am I telling you? Don't you know what a fairy godmother looks like? Anyways, she landed right on top of Charlotte's sandwich. Oh, excuse me, is that pumpernickel bread? She said, sniffing the air. I just love the smell of pumpernickel. The girls sat and stared at her with their mouths open because they had never seen a fairy godmother before. Ahem, <clears throat> said the fairy godmother, clearing her throat. Now where was I? Oh yes, I couldn't help but overhear a conversation and it sounds like all of you are quite dissatisfied with who you are, which makes me very unhappy and I would like to offer you the opportunity to be someone else. What do you mean? asked Charlotte, pulling her sandwich from underneath the fairy godmother's bottom. What I mean, replied the fairy, and please do not interrupt me, is that if you are so jealous of Bina, then by all means you should be someone else. In fact, perhaps one of you should even like to trade places with Bina. Oh, that's silly. How could we possibly be someone else? Interrupted Grace. Well, if you'd let me finish, harumphed the fairy. When I sprinkle my magic dust over you, you can be whoever you'd like to be. But first, you might want to fly over to Bina's house with me and spend some time with her, just to make sure that her life is to your liking, or anyone else's for that matter. The girls all gulped and nodded, and finally Nicole said, But, but... But she'll see us looking through the window and she'll think we're burglars or something. Yes, she might call the police, added Amy. Oh, nonsense, scoffed the fairy, nibbling on Charlotte's chocolate chip cookie. When I sprinkle you with this magic fairy dust, you will all be invisible and you can go wherever you want to go and no one will ever see you. The girls just sat there speechless, which didn't happen very often, I can assure you. Well, don't just sit there stuffing your faces, tutted the fairy, stuffing her face. My time is very valuable. The girls leaned forward and whispered quietly for a moment. They decided that even though the fairy took her their cookies without asking, she seemed rather harmless. And anyway, they couldn't turn down the chance to spy on Bina without her knowing they were there. They all asked to be sprinkled with fairy dust and off they flew to Bina's house. Suddenly they found themselves sitting around Bina's kitchen table and there on her hands and knees was Bina scrubbing the floor. Sweat was dripping from her forehead and she looked very tired. All at once her father came in the room and said, it's getting late Bina, when you're finished scrubbing the floor I think you should start cooking dinner. I'm going outside to fix the car. Bina smiled and said, okay Papa. Then he was gone. Bina proceeded to do multiple tasks. When she finished cleaning the floor, she peeled potatoes, she chopped onions, she set the table, she scaled the fish, she washed and ironed the clothes. And finally, she emptied the trash. The English roses couldn't believe their eyes. They had never seen a girl work so hard in their lives. She reminds me of Cinderella, said Amy. She looks like she hasn't combed her hair in a week, remarked Charlotte. Where is her mother? asked Nicole. She doesn't have a mother replied the fairy godmother. She lives alone with her father and he works all day, so when she comes home from school, she has to clean the house and wash the clothes and cook the dinner. You mean she does it all by herself, asked Grace? Yes, you ninnies, replied the fairy. I just said she lives alone with her father. Well, what happened to her mother, asked Nicole. She died a very long time ago, poor thing, sighed the fairy. And as you know, Bina has no friends, so she spends all of her time on her own. Well, come along then, girls. Would you like to see what her bedroom looks like? The English roses all stood up, but they all felt bad about leaving Bina behind all by herself with so much work. Oh, don't dawdle, ladies. I've got places to go and people to meet, the fairy said impatiently. So off they went to see if Bina's room was to their liking. They were not prepared for what they saw. A simple room with a single bed, a chest of drawers, a shelf full of books. There was, of course, one doll, but only one. Can you believe it? Well, you better, because I'm telling you. There was one picture in a frame on the bedside table, and all the girls gathered around to see who it was in the picture. It was a beautiful photograph of Bina's mother. Nicole's eyes began to fill with tears. I feel so bad, she said. It must be awful not to have a mother. She must feel terribly lonely, said Charlotte and we haven't been very nice to her. Well, what do you say, interrupted the fairy godmother. Anyone want to trade places? There was a very long pause. The English roses looked at one another. It was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. I think we've made a terrible mistake, said Grace. I can't imagine living without my mum. I don't want to do so many chores, said Amy. I don't know the first thing about cooking. Well, is there anyone else you'd like to be, said the fairy godmother. Perhaps in another neighborhood or another city or even another country. I'm sure I could arrange it for you. Please just let us go home in our own cozy beds with our families whom we love, begged Nicole. Yes, we want to be home, cried the rest of the girls. Suit yourself, said the fairy, but in the future you might want to think twice before grumbling that someone else has a better life than you. And as I said before, I'm a very busy woman. And in a blink of an eye, the English roses were back in bed, fast asleep. When morning came, the girls awoke, relieved to find they were all still themselves. They told one another about their dream, and they promised each other that from that day on, they would be kinder to Bina and stop complaining about their own lives. First, they invited Bina to a tea party, and then they started walking to school with her. And not long after that, they were doing homework together. Bina even taught them how to bake an apple pie. 
They soon found out she was very likable indeed. They grew to love her like a sister and often went to her house to help her with her chores. Time went by and soon everywhere the English Joseph's went, Bina went with them. And you're not going to believe this, but people in the neighborhood started talking about them. And this is what they said. Those English roses are really special. What beautiful girls. They'll grow up to be incredible women one day. And you know what? They did. If you don't believe me, then go out and find out for yourselves. I didn't make this up. The end. So there you have it. That was me reading The English Roses by Madonna. Um, this was one of my favorite books growing up, and I hope that I introduced a new children's book to y'all, because I think this is a great book for kids out there. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching, and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!